entertainment for the family News, sports and commentaries And the best of show Love FM 88.9, 95.1, 98.1, 98.5 Number one station in Belize Nationwide coverage Good evening. The time is 8 o'clock. Coming up in just a few, we do have for you. In university, these three heavy hitters play a key role in the success and excellence of the programs and the students at Galen University. It is my pleasure to invite and to welcome um, our deans to this show tonight. And I want to introduce each of them. So I want to start with Dean Sherry Gibbs, who is the Dean of the Faculty of Arts, Science and Technology. Welcome, Dean Gibbs. Good night. Thank you. Welcome. Good. We also have with us tonight Dr. Dorian Barrow, who is the Dean of Faculty of Education at Gale University. Welcome, Dr. Barrow. Welcome, Mrs. Perfi. Thank you very much for having me tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. And we also have on with us tonight Dr. Silvia Katus, who is the Dean of Faculty of Business and Entrepreneurship. Welcome, Dr. Katus. Good night, Ms. Diana. Thank you. Good night, radio audience. Thank you all for being on with us tonight. I am Diana Gomez Perifid and I am your host. It's always a pleasure to be here with you each each Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. And tonight is actually our final episode for season three. And we thought it would be a good time for us to talk about um, our programs. Um, we are in the, we're in the throes of our recruitment. And so tonight is a good time for you to hear from our deans about the programs that we are offering and what our students can um, come and join our um, university and what degrees they can actually take. But before we actually get into our conversation and discussion tonight, I'd like to ask um, for us to view a video of one of our soaring eagles, Miss Reese Medina, so we can um, start off our conversation with that video. asked to describe Gillen University in three words, I would say educational, innovative, and supportive. When I first started, I came directly from high school and I did not know what to expect. But Galen University provided me with the tools and the resources I needed to succeed every step of the way, starting with their informative orientation session and advising system, which guided me to the right courses for my degree. To the classes that were taught by knowledgeable and skilled faculty members, as well as student peers, tutors, administration, and staff who cared about addressing the needs of the students. And let me not forget about student life and Galen clubs, where I met amazing individuals who are friends to this day. It was an amazing experience, and I still use the knowledge learned to this day. As the owner of my own business, an adjunct lecturer, and a scout volunteer at the local, national, and international level. So you see, Galen provided me with the foundation that I needed. And this is why I am a proud Galen Eagle. Yes, so the proof is in our eagles. Uh, when we say that Galen University should be our number one choice for higher education, 
we mean what we say and we like to invite our eagles to share with you why we say so. Tonight, though, we have on our deans to help and add to this message. Um, and we have a few things that we really want to discuss tonight. So we want to start with, um, I'll, I'll start with Dr. Silvia Katus, because whenever we're in recruitment, she's always um, reminds us of this particular fact. So, Dr. Katus, can you share with us a little bit about why Galen, why we say when we, we talk about Galen that Galen is internationally recognized? Um. Thank you, Ms. Diana. Our degrees are acceptable in any part of the world. Our students apply for scholarships all over the world. We find our students applying for, um, for employment all over the world. And they have absolutely no um, problems uh, with our degrees. Our degrees are what are referred to as transportable degrees. That means you leave our shores and you take your degree and it's just as valid outside of the lease. Thank you, Dr. Katu. So yes, so we that is one of the um, one of the points that we do both, one of the benefits of coming to Gale University. And so we believe that it's something that each of our faculty, um, dean of faculty could speak to, but um, we are a university that's internationally recognized and maybe we could talk about some of our students who we know have moved on and to what um, parts of the world and universities um, they have moved to. Um, dean Gibbs, do you, would you like to share a little bit about some of our Galen Eagles that we've seen moved on with absolute ease and um, entered into other universities um, throughout the world? Sure thing. Thanks. Yeah, we've had a number of students who've been able to go on to grad school. We have uh, two students studying in Romania, um, in various universities in uh, Europe, uh, and the scholarships as well that they're able to get. We have a, a student, an anthropology graduate, who got one of the German uh, DAAD scholarships. So he's been studying in Germany. We had a student in the Netherlands. We've had students who get Chevening <coughs> and Commonwealth scholarships, so they get to study in the UK. Um, of course, a number of students who have been over in Taiwan, um, the U.S. and Canada. So the, our students have never had any problem um, and have really gotten into some fantastic stellar schools, some fantastic programs, and been able to receive really prestigious scholarships. So, um, yeah, I, I think um, it's a testament to the institution and to the kind of education that students receive here at Galen. And I also wanted to add too, going along with this is we actually get a lot of students who come to study here at Galen. And so the fact that they're going to leave their home institution, usually in North America, we get Canadian and, and um, students from the U.S. coming down to spend a semester with us. So they can study, take four or five courses, and then they can transfer the courses that they're taking with us back to their institution. Um, we're also part of the ELAP program, which is the Emerging Leaders of the Americas program in Canada, where our students can receive a scholarship through the Canadian government to spend a semester at um, a number of universities that we have relationships with. Um, and so then we can work with them to get their, their courses transferred back. Um, and so you can really see, as Dr. Katus was saying, about the transportability of our program, but also our courses and our, our um, credits. Yeah. Great, thank you. Because indeed, that's one of the questions that students ask often. If I come and I take my, my bachelor's degree or my graduate degree, my master's degree, can that be transferred? It absolutely can um, transfer there. We've never had anybody have any problem um, with their degrees out of Gale University. So that's one fair and that we can easily squash and get rid of. So now, um, Gale University also focuses on lifelong learning. So there are certain pillars that we talk about when we talk about Gale University. Um, lifelong learning is one of those. I wanted to know if Dr. Dr. Barr, would you like to start us off with that and talk um, a little well, bit about of course. how? Of course, of course, um, Mrs. B. Um, this, is, this is one of, not um, Gale University have adopted that um, um, as one of our core values um, where we prepare students to continue to learn even after they have left our doors. 
even after they have walked out of the hallowed halls of Galen. And this is a requirement now for the, the global marketplace. You have to be connected to the internet and you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared to be a continuous learner which means that the way how we orient and train our students it's not just for now it's not just for taking a course and getting a grade what we try to do is to develop some skills um, some strategies in terms of how to be a continuous learner um, the use of the internet as a resource has become very 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 important as a matter of fact um, it has really narrowed the gap between small institutions and larger institutions we have access to the same sort of materials that they had exclusive access to at one point and so we train the student to be able to do research um, to be able to summarize uh, information they have read. There is um, Dean Gibbs, for example, um, of her lifelong fight with students is to be able to do that right, right? To be able to do that right um, um, when it comes to uh, plagiarism and these kinds of things. So we try to develop these competences in the student so that they would be able to take these skills um, to their workplaces and onto their post-Galen lives in terms of continuous, continuous, <laughs> continuous educating themselves, continuous learning, continuous reskilling themselves. Mm -hmm. um, Miss Diana, beyond just what we try to imbue in our students, we also have the Galen Center for Professional Development, Continuing Education and Lifelong Learning. And that is available to anyone in the community. Uh, we have courses that are specifically developed. Um, you know, since the pandemic, many people have changed professions. Some of them have gone into doing their own business. But there's been this vast need for skilling and upskilling, even in the same uh, workplace. And within our center, we can do these kinds of things as well. Uh, we even work with corporations who have a cadre of employees that they would need to train in some particular area as well, and we can do that through our center uh, for professional development, continuing education, and lifelong learning. Wonderful. One of the other, I'm gonna jump in here too, if you don't mind, but I think too, um, what we do also is to really encourage those professionals who've made a decision to not just do that professional development that they can easily find with us, but to encourage them to come back to get a bachelor's degree. So maybe they had an associate's degree, um, and they're recognizing, especially in public service, maybe they're coming up to retirement or they're wondering, you know, what am I going to do in the next little while? Um, and as Dr. Katus had mentioned, that upskilling, um, giving them those tools so that they can um, go on and change careers. Because we're seeing so many people, it's rare these days where you have people who stay in the same career for decades, um, maybe like our parents did. And, and so being able to switch gears and, and learn something different and do something new and being able to make a, you know, you're, you know, maybe in your 40s and deciding, ah, you know what, I want a career change. I want to do something different and knowing that it's available. So we work with these professionals to ensure that we can get the courses that they need, uh, working with their schedules. And, that you know, that sort of speaks to our um, online platforms that we've had for years now to work with these professionals to ensure that they can um, get their degrees um, to, you know, to fulfill their own lifelong goals. So encouraging those who are recognizing that they're lifelong learners. But I think, too, we try to encourage our students to just be curious and stay current. A lot of what's going on right now, and so hoping, as Dr. Barra mentioned, we've given them those tools and sort of, you know, spurred that curiosity in them, find out, you know, what's been happening in Ukraine. Um, what is the history behind 
the issue between Russia and Ukraine? Why does Putin think that he has claim? Um, how could this really impact us? Uh, I think, you know, even just at that level as well, I think that's really important. Definitely. Well, well, well also, Ms. D, um, as Dr. Mm -hmm. as Dr. Kat has pointed out, this whole thing of modern credentials, right? Modern credentials. Um, and I was so impressed um, 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 over the year w when we introduced this film um, 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 component to a program. You don't have to come to Galen to do a degree. You could come to get some modern credentials. You want to learn how to do marketing. You want to learn how to do um, video production. Um, these kinds of skills um, that might be important additional skills to whatever it is that you're currently doing, there is also this opportunity in terms of your lifelong learning career. Yep, absolutely. I think this might be a good way and a segue into asking a follow-up question then. So what do we do, what do you do in your faculty to ensure that you're preparing your um, cohorts and your students for the needs of our country? So yes, we know we're, we're, it's lifelong learning that we're promoting, we're teaching them to always be educating themselves and learning and growing. Um, but what are we doing to ensure that we are also meeting the needs um, of our country um, and our people? Dean Gibbs, I know you have some new programs. <laughs> like to start us off <laughs> yeah i was just writing down because i i thought dr katise was going to jump in but yes i, I think I, one I, of the I, things that's okay. <laughs> um that we've that we do is to stay current i think we're really nimble enough and and agile enough to be able to um have that pulse on the markets on the needs of the country and so modify our programs um, as we see fit um, and working with those experts in the field, um, bringing them in to ensure that our students are getting that up-to-date and really current information, um, that knowledge that they need, because things are changing so fast. Um, we've seen it, if I talk about our environmental science program, um, we saw it with now this new ministry of the blue economy and everybody was, you know, what is this? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the shift that's happening within our economies um, and with climate change and how we're um, how we really need to address um, how we deal with our environment, how we're going to develop sustainably, and so that you know being a really big part of everything that we do, um, and really instilling this in our students, um, you know, new topics like um, green financing and of course blue economy, um, you know, how do we how do we protect what we have while at the same time um, not holding ourselves back in terms of, of development and being able to, um, you know, be financially stable as, a, as an independent nation. So I think those things are really important. So, um, you know, lots of new um, areas that we've really had to get into. And it, it's changed within the past 10 years, um, even five years. Um, if I think of some of our other programs as well, like the criminal justice program, um, we, uh, you know, uh, just turn on the news and, and we know what's going on around us. And so preparing our students in the criminal justice program to look at and to try to figure out um, you know, what's happening, what's happening with our youth, um, the understanding youth involvement with uh, in crime, within gangs. How do we work on reducing crime? How do we work with what we like to call our natural partners, right? The government um, in the challenges. And, you know, I think a lot of us just sort of expect the, the government and the police to, to fix all of this and to make us a nice, safe community and society when we really have a huge role to play um, and getting our students to understand that. And how can they be these change makers within their communities to be able to work with young people um, work with community members, work with businesses um, to, um, you know, give these kids a chance, um, get them out of the situations that they're in. And, uh, you know, even looking at restorative justice, which is sort of a, 
I, I don't want to say it's um, a new alternative to looking at um, um, sort of a, a corrections and how we deal with criminals or people that are caught up in the criminal justice system. It's been something that's been used in the U.S. and in North America for a while, but now slowly being introduced here. And how can we use it um, as an alternative, especially with our youth? Um, and I know Dr. Barr, I see him smiling, you know, the same sort of thing in our schools mm -hmm. um, and working with these young people. One one of the things that we also do, Ms. Diana, in order to inform us and you know, to keep our programs current, we continuously scan uh, the economic environment, the political environment, the social environment. Also, too, we develop networks. Galen University is an engaged university. Uh, we develop networks within the various ministries, uh, with our other with social partners, external mm -hmm. partners. And uh, also, we make sure that our faculty gets exposed to workshops and they um, get engaged in different organizations. And these are the ways uh, that we keep current. Uh, we have partners. Uh, whenever we're going to change a program, we feel it's need, it's need, there's a need to change a program, we then engage with our area-specific partners uh, to help us make those to inform us and to help us make those decisions as well so um, and and you know one of the great things and miss um, Gibbs mentioned it because we're a small university we're agile yeah and that makes it easy for us to also become engaged and take advantage of a lot of opportunities that are out there that we can also ex that we extend our students our students become engaged in these new areas as well many of them as Gibbs mentioned like the blue economy the green climate fund and things like that and so we're continuously finding ways uh, to be engaged and also to inform what we offer in, in our curriculum Certainly. I, um, I know tomorrow there's a graduation happening, Dr. Katuz. Um, that's one of the ways that we have partnered with the Ministry of Public Service. I don't know if you want to um, say a little bit about that at this point. Certainly. Um, we had the opportunity to work with the Ministry of the Public Service a few months ago. Uh, to train senior public officers in each department to be trainers of trainers in good governance, transparency, and ethics. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, it was a, about a two-month program. And so finally tomorrow we get to graduate. About 45 people entered the program and I believe about 42 of them finished the program. But these are now senior public officers who are trained to work within their departments to offer training, to work on developing anti-corruption policies, um, not just within their own department, but can contribute as the government uh, goes about reviewing and evaluating and putting in place uh, proper anti-corruption policies. Yeah. Dr. B, I don't know if there's anything you want to chime in here and say about or um Well, not, mu not much because it, it has already been covered, except for the fact that um, um, we, are, we, we, we also have to think um, um, about the present in terms of, sorry, the future in terms of the present. Um, we are about to go into... Um, um, into face to face mode again um so there will be a new normal so we we have spent all this week actually in in my faculty talking about well what does that mean what will that new normal what will that new new normal be what are some of the things that we are going to keep um um what are going to be some of the things that we're going to have to add based on or we're based on the experience that we had over the last two years in terms of the of the COVID. So the 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 for us the, the new normal is gonna be a bit of the old but a lot of the new. A lot of the new. A lot of the 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 stuff that we um have been doing all along actually as a as a as a um in terms of our online outreach trying to reach as many um, people as possible 
trying to customize our programs to meet the needs of the of the of the participants of our clients um mm -hmm. a lot of that is going to is 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 going to continue right mm -hmm. and we are going to be adding some new some new um some new activities um associated with what we have learned over the last two years for example we um in the faculty of education have all our programs online and one of the programs that we have um, put together recently in response to the needs have been a program in education leadership right mm -hmm. we now have a post graduate certificate program in education leadership um, because there was a need the ministry actually approached us and asked us if we can put that program on um, so we 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 are going to be doing a lot of those kinds of things but in some of our programs um, um, they require a practical or a practicum or an internship component and over the last two years we have had to modify that to respond to the fact that the teachers they were largely at home the students they were certainly at home um, and they had to do education they had to do school from home so we had to modify that and we have learned a lot from that experience and uh, for example one of the things that we do know is we require the students to put together an e-portfolio an e-portfolio that uh, have replaced the old manual um, pen and pencil portfolio and it is so much more uh, first of all attractive but it's it's a lot more packed with information you can include videos recording of classes and that type of thing so it's things like that that we have learned from or experience over the last two years that we're going to be keeping um uh, that, that 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 we're going to be adding even to this new um face-to-face -face, um um wrong that we are going to be entering into as early as june right uh, sorry as early as may yeah um, um, yes yeah thank you dr b indeed um in the faculty of education you were dealing with your teachers uh, who are in the classroom and that was a particular um challenge and i think we've all risen to the challenge and i i am so proud of how our belize has uh dealt with covid 19. um it is 8 27 i'd like for us to take a quick break and we'll be right back um, after this break with more information about gay university and the unique programs offered through our university stay with us I believe education wise of course Yellen University has definitely fulfilled that promise of course because you know and that expectation because going to any any institution for education you're hoping that at least education wise they're fulfilling that promise of you know delivering the standard for the work that is being offered or you know for any type of university work so I believe on on that you know on that area in that area they have definitely fulfilled their promise as I believe that I've been able to go to all classes and had you know debatable discussions and it was always respectful so I always enjoyed that at Yale University it has always felt that intelligent minds meet up here and we have these discussions and we help each other grow through these discussions so yeah I definitely I definitely think Yale University is doing amazing to learn more about our various programs visit our website at www.galen.edu.bz or email us at admissions at galen.edu.bc. Yes, welcome back to the Galen Hour. There's no better advertisement for university than our Galen Eagles. Um, Alexander Flowers is one of our Eagles. He is also the president of the Rotaract Club of Galen University, a very vibrant, very involved, very intelligent um, young e Galen Eagle. So we're always um, happy to showcase um, the excellence that comes out of Galen. Um, yes, so we've, we're talking with our deans tonight and um, sharing information about Galen, um, reminding you of why we are the leader in education, in higher education 
in the country of Belize. Um, and why we are uh, should be a first choice for anybody looking to continue their um, education beyond high school and sixth form. So I'd like to then um, go back to our deans and ask you um, of the programs um, that are offered under your faculty, um, what of, which of these programs are unique to Galen? Um, I know we have programs that are offered wherever you may take certain degrees, but there are certain things that you can only get if you come to Galen University. Well, if I could start, um, um, Miss, Mrs. Perifit, um, Galen University is the only university in the country and in the world that offers a bachelor's degree program in Belize studies. The only institution in the world. The Ministry of Education, as you know, in its collective wisdom, have decided that social studies will no longer be taught in our secondary schools and Belizean studies instead will be taught. Um, Dean Gibbs, Dean Sherry Gibbs, is an active member of that committee that, that is overseeing the development of the curriculum for that and Galen decided to immediately respond to the need and we put a program together, right? And we submitted, we submitted the program to the Joint Board of Teacher Education, which is our, um, our, our oversight board. We can't offer any program in the Faculty of Education at Galen unless it is approved by that board. And we got approval for that. That program, uh, has tremendous promise. Um, we can train all. We can educate all the current and future Belize Studies teachers in the country, right? So that is a starter um, 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 that we can we can clearly label as something that is uniquely Gaelic. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to jump in and um, because I, I think that all of our FAST programs, the Faculty of Art, Science and Technology, are all unique. Um, we have the only bachelor's degree program in criminal justice. We have the only bachelor's degree in anthropology, in computer science, which is very different from IT, in environmental science, which is very different from natural resource management. And we have an associate's degree, the only associate's degree in Belize in veterinary technology. So all of the FAST programs are really unique to Belize. Um, while there are some um, for criminal justice um, and computer science associate's degrees, I want to encourage all of those students out there that have their associates in those programs, you can come to Galen and continue to get your bachelor's degrees in them. Um, if you're interested in any of these, um, then you have to come to Galen because we're the ones who are going to be um, educating you and preparing you for careers in criminal justice anthropology. And within our anthropology program, uh, this is my background, so I'm extremely passionate about this program. Um, you can focus on cultural anthropology, so understanding, um, and Belize is just a fantastic, amazing place for cultural anthropology and archaeology, but with all of our different cultures, um, and languages, um, and, and so uh, um, just a, you know, a fantastic place to immerse yourself to learn this. But then also, too, for archaeology, you can specialize in that. We have a lot of students who will major in anthropology and then minor in archaeology. So you can take all of the archaeology classes. You can get a chance to get out into the field, work with Belizean archaeologists, as well as international foreign archaeologists. Um, it's really great to get different perspectives and to um, you know, understand what each researcher is doing, um, what their research goals are, uh, and, and so that you can broaden your horizon there. But you get these great opportunities to actually get out in there, into your community or into the field, um, and to experience this. And the same for the environmental science program, of course, um, computer science. Um, you know, making, um, I'm really big on, um, you know, students being able to make programs, new apps, um, games. I'm waiting for this Belizean game company to start up. I know there's so many students out there and people out there who 
playing video games. Um, I listen to my son talk about um, new mods that are coming out or um, new additions to games. And I think we need to be doing this here. We have so many creative people here um, that um, that we could easily be doing this. Uh, and so this would be the program for you. Lots of unique programs indeed and very interesting ones. It, op it, it opens up a whole new um, bunch of opportunities for our students. It's most right. tend to think just, you know, the, the more traditional um, programs. So this and that's, yeah, and I'm glad that you said that, really different from the traditional programs that a lot of students and parents think about. Um, and I like to tell this to high school students that it doesn't matter what you chose to do in high school, you and even junior college, and even if you're, you know, working, you can always change your mind and get into a new area. Um, and we have those support um, services that were there to assist you make that transition in. Yep. Dr. Katoos? Um, yes. Okay. So one of the things that we were very concerned about when we decided to change one of our programs a few years ago, so many students were being, were asking for degrees in business administration, but we really felt that it was also important that these students have a concentration. So one of the awesome things about our business administration degree program is that a student can come to us with, yes, that interest in management um, and in administrating and, and in strategic planning and all of that. However, they can take six courses within that degree program to, uh, as a concentration, we call it specializing. So you can get a degree in business administration and you specialize in accounting or environmental science or marketing, economics, computer science, the programs that Dean Gibbs mentioned, anthropology, criminal justice, hospitality and tourism management, all archeology, span anthropology, all those programs she mentioned. Our student can come in and, yes, you're interested in business administration, but let's do a little bit more. It, add val it adds value to that degree when you go out there in the workplace if you do a specialization in any of the other areas that we offer. Additionally, of course, we have our program in our, our bachelor's degree program in entrepreneurship. And I know oftentimes people might say, well, why? Why do you want to? Why, why should I get a degree in entrepreneurship? I have a good business idea and I have a passion for it. And really, all I want to do as well is to develop my good business idea, be my own boss, and make a whole bunch of money. Well, it's not so easy anymore. Additionally, in our program, we focus on innovation. What will make your product or your service different? What would make you more competitive? What will give you that competitive edge? And one of the things that we are working on at this time is our innovation center for students who come into our program with a good idea and during the course of uh, obtaining the degree, they develop that program in the innovation center and we're able to support that program with even a grant or are pointing them to a loan. So they graduate not just with a degree in entrepreneurship, but also with a startup. So, and of course, additionally too, it's not our entrepreneurship program is really not just about starting a business. It's also about that attitude. We want our business students to have an entrepreneurial attitude. We call it that I can do business, that I can do anything kind of attitude. Anything you throw at them, okay? they should be able to figure it out. Also, many corporations these days are hiring people that we, that are referred to as entrepreneurs. Within that corporation, they want people who are entrepreneurial thinking that they can give projects to and the people work with a group, with a team, and they run with that project as if though it was their own business. So that's I feel very close to that particular program. Uh, we've had some great successes in that program, and I'm really looking forward to some of the other things that we're developing to offer in that program. And of course, there's our international business degree program. That program um, 
Many of our students get hired at the end of the internship. It has a great internship. We place our students with Bell Trade. We place them with Imarbe. We place them with several other companies that do business globally. And um, I, I, I know I'm going to stop there, but I think we have some very unique programs uh, within our faculty. We absolutely have unique programs in all of our faculties and we're proud um, to share them because we know this is what makes us stand out um, and this is why we have such excellence at Galen University. Our students are not only traditional students, a lot of our students are working students and we make it our business to cater to these students. How do we cater to the working professional um, and to ensure that they're able to pursue their degree programs while they still keep their jobs. What do we do at Galen? So I mentioned this earlier, we've had our online programs for a number of years now um, to do exactly that, to address the needs of these professionals. Um, and recognizing that yeah, they're a little bit unique. Um, their situation is a lot different from our traditional students who are usually yeah, teenagers, maybe early 20s, most likely living at home, or if they're renting a place, they go back home to mom and dad on the weekends. Um, but these professionals, they don't just work full time, they have families, uh, they have a myriad of other responsibilities that um, need to be taken into consideration. And so we offer our classes at night for them, um, and you know the scheduling is between six and nine right after dinner or you know they get home from work um, as well as saturdays um and we work with them to look at their schedule see the kind of the, the workload that they can handle um you know we don't want to load them up with a with a uh, you know taking five or six courses um they won't have any time at all to uh, to do their work or just to look after you know family and, and get that needed rest that everybody needs uh and so i think that that kind of speaks to our advising that uh that we do for all of our students um all of our faculty and including us deans all act as advisors for all of our students um we need to get to know them we need to understand their their realities, the challenges that they have, because everybody is different um, and has something unique going on. And so we make sure that we work with them so that they can be successful and to get that degree that they're seeking. One of the things that Sherry mentioned is the fact that we've been on, from our inception, we've had an online platform. And we, one of the first degrees we had that was fully online, we had both our, our business administration degree was both a face-to-face -face degree as well as we had an online business administration degree. And that catered in every respect in terms of the scheduling and the advising to our students who work. Later on, um, there was a demand for our accounting degree program. And so we also put that particular program online. We thought initially there might be some difficulties because we put a great amount of um, we put a great amount of emphasis on the uh, internship component of that degree program. Many of our students in the face-to-face -face program are placed with some of the top accounting firms in Belize and are usually hired right out of graduation by some of those same firms. However, the challenge with the uh, accounting students who worked uh, is that they couldn't do a internship, so we developed capstone projects for them. And that is working out really, really well. Mm -hmm. we have, we've done the same thing with our criminal justice program because when it started, it was really directed towards those working professionals. But as the program, they, you know, years went by and it really started to grow. We, um, we have a really large uh, component of the traditional student coming out of high school or junior college. Um, and they want to have that face-to-face -face experience because the criminal justice program is an online program. Um, so we offer for those students who want to be on campus, we have those general education core courses that they can take during the day and then their criminal justice courses are on at night or on the weekends. But as Dr. Katus mentioned, so for the students who aren't working, they have that opportunity to do the internship. 
Um, and that's really fantastic for them. It's an opportunity for them to build their CV. Yes. Um, it's a, oftentimes a complaint for students when they're leaving school. You know, of course, they need to show that they have some sort of work experience. So it allows them to get that hands on. Um, to build those connections, to build that social capital. But then, too, for those who are already working and established, um, they have the thesis option. And this is really great for them because they usually have access to some fantastic data. They're also seeing the, the issues and, the, and, the, um, and, and problems within their maybe work environment or within the area of the criminal justice system that they're in. Um, and so they have opportunities to do some really fantastic research. Mm -hmm. And also, too, this to go on to grad school. I think that's also a yep. really great opportunity, too, for them to, um, a lot of our students recognize um, after they get in that they want to continue and they want to go on to grad school. And so doing the thesis, um, or as Dr. Katus mentioned, a capstone, really prepares you for doing that graduate work. I want us to talk about our graduate programs. I want us to talk about the programs that we offer at Gale University. So you can do your bachelor's at Galen, but you can also get an MBA or an a master's in business administration and a master's in development studies. Um, and we also know in the education program, we have a postgraduate degree certificate in leadership as well. So Gain has moved beyond just offering undergrad degree programs and we're offering you graduate degree programs. Um, Dr. Katus and Dean Gabes, I'd like for you to share with us a little bit about your um, graduate programs. We have had, in, uh, in our faculty, uh, we have had an MBA program, a Master's in Business Administration, for almost since our inception as well. And uh, that program attracts working professionals uh, nationally. Um, students are allowed to take two courses per semester. Uh, they're done, cons the, their courses are seven weeks. Uh, the same amount of hours for a normal three credit course, but it's seven weeks and they're done back to back. So they're never taking two courses at the same time. Occasionally, uh, they may have to take an extra course that's usually towards the end of the program. Our MBA program is anywhere from 15 to 18 months and it's 12 courses. And in that 12 courses is, of course, also your thesis course uh, towards the end. It is all it was when it started it was a a hybrid course and um since the pandemic it's become mostly an online course now that we're able to go back to face to face we are going to have some components of it we're going to go back to some of the hybrid meaning that from time to time on a saturday or an evening students will have to meet uh, but otherwise, it is mostly an online uh, program. Um, it's also a program where we find professionals are able to also develop lifelong uh, career um, partners, the network um, that they can, can call upon during the course of their own, um, their own work. So um, we encourage people to do it. Uh, we admit a small number of people who don't already have a bachelor's degree on the what we call a, matric, a maturity matriculation uh, program, whereby if someone doesn't have a, a bachelor's degree, but they've been in the workplace for a while, especially functioning at a supervisory or managerial level, they have taken a number of uh, courses here and there and so we would ask them to give us a portfolio and we evaluate it and then they can gain admission depending on what they have. Great. So um, I really encourage people who are out there that don't have a bachelor's degree but have always been interested in an MBA, right, to apply. Yep. And then there's also the option of doing a master's in development studies. Um, the games you want to share a little bit about that program? Yeah, sure. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, this program's been in the works for a while, um, and um, it's very near and dear to my heart. And for those of us who have really worked on it, because we've recognized the need for this within the country. Um, and it's Galen's, our response, Galen's response to the challenges, the challenge of 
achieving that equitable and sustainable development. And so, as I mentioned earlier, sustainable development is that um, that binder that keeps us all together at, at Gala. It's woven through our programs. It's in our mission and vision statement. Um, but really taking this and applying the the theories um, of sustainable development to what's happening on the ground here in Belize. So this program really speaks to anybody, really. It doesn't really matter what area you've come from. Um, it is sort of set up within the social sciences. And so if you're coming from that, if you have a bachelor's degree in that area, um, uh, this would be, you know, a perfect um, and obvious sort of fit for you. But for even those who are in business, um, working within governments, um, even education. Um, I think this would really be a fantastic program for you if you're um, to look at the development needs of the country, whether it's environmental, whether it's social, whether it's economic, institutional. Um, so it's broad enough to catch um, individuals' various interests um, and to bring them together. And so it, our mission statement really speaks to producing knowledge and preparing leaders that are capable of interpreting and transforming the reality of Belize and, of course, um, the region. Because we can't just look at ourselves in uh, in this, you know, little silo. Um, uh, we realize more and more how impacted we are uh, by what's happening outside. Um, and so, really, generating innovative, sustainable thought and practice through engagement of local realities and working with communities um, and really making this a, a, an applied um, project. Um, so, yeah. Yes, so thanks, um, Dean Gibbs. So, yeah, so there's quite a bit going on at Gale University. We encourage our viewing audience, we encourage students and prospective students, um, those who have been out of the classroom for a while, to come and explore what's available at Galen. We have a Galen Eagle Day coming up on April 1st, um, and so we'll be advertising it, so look out for that. I want to take a quick um, final break, and when we come back, we can talk about what's on the horizon for Galen University, and then I'll invite Dr. Barrow to talk a little bit more about what's in the makings in his um, um, faculty as well. So we'll be right back after this um, break. Galen University offers a variety of quality academic programs. Visit our website at www.galen.edu.bz or give us a call at 615-3129 or 614-6415 for more information. Apply today and come soar with our Galen Eagles. Welcome back to the Galen Hour. We're in our final segment and our wrap-up segment of the Galen Hour. The time has gone so quickly. The conversation and information has been so interesting and very relevant. Um, we're in the throes of recruitment. Schools are winding down to the end of the semester. We have lots of graduates who will be looking um, where they're going to go, what they're going to do next, and we encourage education always as an option for your next step forward. Um, What's on the horizon for Galen University? Dr. B, we ended the second segment saying we'll come back to you and ask you to talk to us about what's happening. Um, I, I, and I particularly want you to talk about a postgraduate degree um, in leadership education that hopefully will turn into uh, a graduate degree program as well. Yes, well, well, it's already uh, the, uh, a graduate degree program, but Basically, before I talk about that, I want to just um, um, reiterate something that both the deans have said um, um, <clears throat> in their discourse on this topic of higher education in Belize and, and, and where Galen sits. Um, one of the things that we have recognized very, very early was the importance of remote learning, of distance learning. And we have invested over the years a lot of our resources in putting in place the infrastructure. So while other places were building big administrative buildings, we were making sure that we had the proper fiber optics, um, um, cable connection, the proper server size, 
we were upgrading um, the, 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 the machines that people use. Tremendous amount of investment in that. So we have one of the most stable and, in my view, one of the most efficient um, um, remote learning infrastructure in place. We can offer all our programs uh, via, via remote learning at this stage. We have that kind of capacity. We have the support structure in place in order to do that. Now, that is important for us in education because a lot of our students, a lot of our clients are working people, right? They have an eight to five job or an eight to four job. And um, this remote learning, this distance learning, this online um, um, learning opportunity um, has been very, very important to them and to their own professional development. Now, we have identified um, a key area of education leadership. Our education system needs additional support and critical support in that area of leadership. So what we did was to put together a master's degree program in education leadership. And that program is in two parts. One part is a postgraduate certificate program in leadership. Um, and that program has been approved. That part of the program has been approved by the, by the Belize um, Board of Teacher Education. So it is an officially recognized certification um, um, route for people who want to lead in our school system. Um, we, they are now in the process of finalizing the total package. Just this week, um, I got an update from Ms. Jeannie Franklin in terms of how that is, how, how that is going. And within the next few weeks, um, that should complete the process and we should have that available where you could do the one year of the leadership component and exit there, or you could go on to do the second year of the master's degree program in leadership that has an important research component. So that is where we are going in terms of the future. More investment in remote learning, IT infrastructure, right? Uh, more investment in that and um, looking for these kinds of opportunities, responding to the need of the area that we try and serve in the development of Belize. Fantastic, Dr. Barrow. I want to invite Dean Sherry Gibbs and Dr. Katoos to give their final words um, before we bring our show to an end tonight. Um, Thanks, Ms. Deanna, uh, and thanks so much for having us on. This has been a lot of fun, um, and it's always great to be able to talk about our our programs. Um, I just want to kind of, Dr. Barrow had mentioned something um, when he was talking about research, and we're it's a it's something that we're really starting to look more and more into. We're recognizing that we have access to a lot of data. Um, there's so much of it here in Belize that we're collecting it, and we don't even realize it. And so one of the things that you know, really instilling in our students is the importance of research. You have this data, now let's take this data and figure out what we're going to do with it and what does it mean. And then being able to make and make this, this data and your research then um, become useful for policy um, and for, um, you know, using it. Uh, I think that's something that we're realizing it's more and more important these days is that we're making decisions based on the the research uh, that's being done. And so instilling this in our students, and that kind of goes along with the whole thing of lifelong learning too, right? Um, and getting them excited about this. And so in all of our programs, that element of, and all the opportunities they have in their courses to do some of this research. So I just want to encourage anybody out there who's listening, who may have been interested in anything that we were talking about, um, please get in touch with us. 
um, for parents out there. We can set up meetings with you. We can bring you in to discuss financial options, um, which program might be right for for you, friend, and for your for your child. For those of you listening, for you kids who, you know, finishing up high school, um, finishing up junior college. Congratulations on on getting there, but really seriously think about that next step because we know um, you need to continue going on and uh, we're here to work with you. Thank you, Dean Gibbs. Dr. Katus, Diana, I want to uh, go back to what I mentioned earlier about individuals who need to upskill and reskill and companies who really also need to upskill their own uh, employees. Uh, we offer those services. In fact, we're in the process right now of talking with an external organization to get certain types of certification uh, for different areas that companies might want to address in terms of skilling and upskilling uh, their employees. And what we're looking at is what we call stackable certification, which means that you can come to us you can get a certificate in this area within these few months and come back later on and do something else. And these various certificate stocks, some uh, universities refer to them as badges, but these certifications stock and eventually we have a number of them that can then lead to a degree. We find, especially with millennials, uh, they seem to have an intolerance for long programs. And so for particularly people who are like that, the shorter bites the, 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 the are better and we just stop that certification. I also encourage companies that are looking as well to, uh, right now we're in the process of offering things like financial education. Um, we just developed a, we just put one on for a large company here in Belize and we're about to put another one on next month uh, for a company who got concerned that their employees uh, were not able to manage their finances, that before the end of the month or the end of the half the pay period they were coming for loans um they were being stressed out with bills and they were it was a, 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 um enough um concern by this company for them to come to us and say listen can you put on a financial education program for us? That's very different. We've heard about financial literacy. That's very different. Financial literacy is knowing about these things. Our financial education is really knowing what to do. So um, we can do those kinds of things. Also cybersecurity, uh, um, also things like forensic auditing. We can get people in to assist you with those kinds of things. So. Thank you. Quite a bit um, that you can access at Gale University. Gale University is accessible. We invite you to contact us to find out more and to see how you can fit in. We are out of time. I want to thank our viewing audience. I want to thank our guests, our deans for being here with us tonight. Um, this show is really the end of season three. We will, or season three, we will take a break. Um, and we will be back in June. And so I thank you for joining us. The Galen Hour is a production of Galen University. It focuses on academic excellence, sustainable development, and lifelong learning. We address national issues, and we're here to talk to our people and share information about Galen University. Thank you, good night, and see you in a few months. Right back here on Love TV. Nice. Thank you, um, Dean. Good night. Thank you, Thank you. Diana. Thank you, radio audience. Good night, everyone. Good night. On the lovely hill.